Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, let's see Domain Relational Calculus example queries. In the last presentation, we have understood about the basics of the Domain Relational Calculus. In this presentation, let's focus on solving some queries. If you are directly watching this lecture, I would request you to watch my previous lecture to gain better insights about the topic. Anyway, I will just provide a brief introduction about this here. This domain relational calculus is a second form of relational calculus. The first form of relational calculus is the tuple relational calculus. If we want to compare relational calculus and relational algebra, we are sure that relational algebra is a procedural query language where we need to instruct what to do. Also, we need to instruct how to do. But relational calculus is a non-procedural one, meaning we need to specify what to do we need not specify how to do. When we talk about tuple relational calculus, the output is taken from the entire tuple. Whereas in domain relational calculus, this operates on domain variables. I mean to say, the output of the query that we are going to supply will be taken from the domain attributes, not from the tuples. I will explain more when we solve some queries. But for now, we will understand the basics. Talking about the domain relational calculus, this is the theoretical basis for QBE, the query by example. Query by example is the first graphical query language that uses visual tables. Also, many graphical front-end tools that we use today uses the idea of QBE. And one more thing I wanted to emphasize here, when we say domain relational calculus is a non-procedural query language, because it's using the abstract approach where we are just going to specify what to do without specifying how to do, there are some conventions that refer non-procedural query language as declarative language. I also would request you to go through the rules which we have already discussed in the previous lecture. In order to solve the queries, this is the university database example we have already seen about this in the schema diagrams lecture of this chapter. We need this university database schema in order to solve the queries. I would request you to make a note of this so that we will be able to solve the queries accordingly. At first, let's dive into example query number one. The first example is find ID, name, department name, salary for instructors whose salary is greater than $80,000. I request you to pause this video for a while. Navigate to the university database example and find out which table or relation has all these four attributes. I hope you are done. Obviously, all these four attributes are available in the instructor relation itself. So let me bring in the instructor relation schema here for easy understanding. Here is the schema. This instructor relation contains four attributes, ID, name, department name, and salary. And the query is, we want to retrieve or find all the four attributes. So this is going to be a straightforward query. The answer for this is, we are going to create four domain variables. Can you see? Domain relational calculus uses domain variables instead of tuples. So I am going to create domain variable I for ID, N for name, D for department name, S for salary. As we are going to retrieve all the attributes from the relation instructor, it's just going to be a straightforward one. All four variables, I mean the domain variables are created. I'm going to check if all these domain variables are belonging to the instructor relation. If I'm going to retrieve the information about all the instructor, we can stop up to this. But the query is we want to retrieve ID, name, department name and salary of instructors who's drawing salary greater than $80,000. Now see what is the domain variable that we have created for salary? S. So the condition is S greater than 80,000, which is the question. So all the domain variables that are belonging to this instructor, also there is an AND condition. The condition is this domain variable salary should be greater than 80,000. I hope the first example is clear for you. Let's navigate to example number two. The question is, find the instructor ID for each instructor with a salary greater than 80,000. In the previous example, we retrieved all four attributes. So we created all four domain variables. 
and we displayed all four domain variables. But now we want to retrieve or find the instructor ID for each instructor with a salary greater than $80,000. For this also, we need the same instructor relation that has all four attributes ID, name, department name and salary. However, we are just going to retrieve only instructor ID. If we are going to retrieve all the attributes, then we are not going to use their existing notation. Since in this example, we are going to retrieve only one column or one variable. So we are going to retrieve only one domain variable to be precise. So we need to use their exist notation. So there exist with the condition. The condition is the domain variable that we create for salary should be greater than $80,000 because that is what mentioned in the question. So what we are going to retrieve here is the instructor ID. So I'm just going to create variable, domain variable for instructor ID, which is I. I means instructor ID and I'm going to use their exist. The reason is we are going to retrieve one column or some columns from the relation. So the other columns I'm just mentioning or other domain variables I'm mentioning with their exist. So I'm going to retrieve instructor ID for which I have created a domain variable I such that there exist N for name. D for department name, S for salary. Remember, all these four domain variables must belong to the instructor relation. If the question is to find the instructor ID of all the instructors, this is enough. But here we have a condition. So all these domain variables should be belonging to the instructor relation. Also, the domain variable S that we have created for salary should be greater than 80,000. And here is the answer for example number two. If you compare example number one and example number two, it seems similar to tuple relational calculus, isn't it? But what's the difference? When we write there exist X or there exist N belong to some relation, in tuple relational calculus, we actually bind it to a relation. But in domain relational calculus, this is not a tuple. These are domain variables. So here domain variables are created and these domain variables are unconstrained until the subformula that we create here, I N D S belongs to instructor. This is the subformula. It means this output constraints to domain variables. I hope the things are clear to you. Let's move on to example number three. The question is find the names of all instructors in the physics department together with the course ID of all courses they teach. I request you to pause this video for a while and think about how many relations are required here. Because at times we may see that our output may not be available in a single relation. We need to deploy two or more relations to get an output. In this case, just pause this video for a while, take this question and compare this with the university database schema and find out how many relations are required here in order to solve this question. I will now display the university database schema. Here it is. I hope you are done. So it is very clear that we need to retrieve the output for that particular query from the instructor relation and from teacher's relation. Because the domain variables, whatever we need, we can retrieve it from these two relations. Let me go back to the question. Here is the question. Now let me bring in the two schemas that are required. Instructor schema and the teacher schema. Instructor, obviously, it contains ID, name, department name and salary. Teacher's relation. Actually, this is a relationship and the relationship also is basically a relation, a table. So it contains ID, the ID of the instructor, the course ID, the instructor has taught, section ID, semester and year. How to retrieve this? Here is the answer. What we are going to retrieve? Find the names of all instructors. So instructor names we need. Also. We need the course ID of all the courses that particular instructor has taught, isn't it? So we are going to retrieve two domain variables output. Number one, the names of all instructor. Number two, the course ID. So we need N. N means the name of the instructor and C, which is the course ID. So I am just using N, the domain variable for name of the instructor and C for the course ID. Now, when we are going to retrieve only selected columns or selected domain, or selected domain variables, then we need to use there exist. And there exist I and A. 
I'm going to retrieve instructor ID and the section ID. I is for the instructor ID. A is the section ID. You may be thinking why I'm using A for section ID instead of S. The problem is, if we are using S, I'm going to reserve S for a semester. In order to avoid ambiguity, I'm just using a different variable name, which is A in this case. So we want to ensure uniqueness in the domain variables. And that is why I'm not preferring S for section ID. I'm preferring A for section ID domain. So there exist I and A. We are going to retrieve only partial information where I instructor ID, C course ID, A section ID, S semester, Y year. These five attributes are belonging to teacher's relation and we are going to retrieve D and S where D is the department name, S is the salary. You can omit S here. However, we want only department mainly. The reason is we are going to retrieve the names of all instructors in the physics department. So definitely we need there exist D such that I N D S in ID, name, department name and salary. All these four attributes are belonging to instructor relation and the main condition department name, this domain variable D should be having the value physics. So if you use this query, we will be getting the names of all instructors along with the course ID where we retrieved it from both the relation instructor and teachers. As I mentioned, you may ignore this S because there is no role for S. However, even if you add it, it's not going to cause any problem to this output. As you are aware, Domain Relational Calculus is a non-procedural query language. We can even create queries as per our own convenience. I hope example number 3 is clear to you. Let me now move on to example number 4. The question is, find the set of all courses taught in the fall 2009 semester, the spring 2010 semester or both. I hope the question is clear. We are going to retrieve the set of all courses taught in fall 2009 semester or spring 2010 semester or both. I request you to pause this video for a while. Let me bring in the university database and find out which relation contains all the required information. I hope you are done. So all the required information are available in section teachers takes. However, I'm going to use section relation for a specific reason. Why? Because this has maximum information. So I'm just preferring section. Let me bring in the section relation here, which contains course ID, section ID, semester, year, building, room number and time slot. Now, one thing what we need to note here is we are not going to retrieve anything related to the instructor who taught the course. Rather, we are going to find the set of all courses that were taught in fall 2009 semester, spring 2010 semester or both. So section relation is sufficient in this case. And the answer for this query is this. So we are going to retrieve the set of all courses. So we are going to focus on one column or one domain variable. Let me create the domain variable C here where C is the course ID. So I'm assuming the question is, Finding the set of all course IDs. All courses or course IDs should be sufficient. So I am just having a domain variable C such that this C is a part of section relation. So we are going to retrieve only one column or one domain variable. So obviously we are going to use there exist S. What is this S? This is the semester, right? So C is for course ID. A is for section ID. S is for semester. Y is for year. B is for building, R is for room number, T is for time slot ID. All these domain variables are belonging to the section relation. But the condition is this S. I mean, this semester should be fall 2009, right? So whatever we retrieve for S should be fall. At the same time, we are taking the year Y should be 2009. So fall 2009, this condition is satisfied. And remember, we also should retrieve for spring 2010 or both. If it is and, we would have used and here. Since it is or both, we are using or. Now let's deal with the second condition, spring 2010. So here we have used S. 
let me use u which is another domain variable where c a s y b r t all these things like the previous case that belongs to the section relation and here whatever we retrieved it for s or u it should be for spring 2010 so s should be spring or u should be spring so s should be spring at the same time y should be 2010 because whatever you get it for u it will be having the output that contains spring 2010 whatever we get for s will be fall 2009 whatever we get for u it will be spring 2010 and we are using r it means output will contain this output this output or both and those output are actually referred by this domain variable c so here is the answer for example number 4 i hope the session is informative and thank you for watching